Blacksmiths go to the region of terms. The black in blacksmith refers to the black, black term which means fire scale, a layer of oxide that forms the, sur the surface of the metal during heating. The origin of smith in the word blacksmith is somehow debated. It may come from the old English word smith meaning to strike or it may have originated from the from the Proto-German word smithas, meaning a skilled no, worker. No, 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 In other search engines, they find smith and the word blacksmith as a as a yeah. one who heats black no, 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 metal. No, 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 the tools he uses are said, no, 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 and the art of the work lies in the skill of the practitioner. Drawing lengthens the metal by reducing one or both of the other than other two dimensions. As the depth is reduced or the width narrowed, the piece is lengthened or drawn out. Drawing does not have to be uniform. A tapper can result as in making a wedge or in woodworking chisel blade. If tapered in two dimensions, a point results. Drawing can be called accomplished with a variety of tools and methods. Two typical methods using only hammer and anvil would be hammering on the anvil horn and hammering on the anvil face using the cross bend of a hammer. Heating iron to a forging heat allows bending as if it were a soft ductile metal like copper or silver. Bending can be done with a hammer over the horn or edge of the anvil or by inserting a bending fork into the hardy hole, the square hole in the top of the anvil. Placing the workpiece between the tines of the fork and bending the material to the, des to the desired angle. Bends can be dressed and tightened or widened by hammering them over the appropriately shaped part of the anvil. Some metals are hard sh hot short, meaning they lost their tensile strength when heated. They become like plasticine, although they may still be manipulated by squeezing and attempt to stretch them, even by bending or twisting, it's like to have them crack and break apart. This is a problem for some blade making steels, which must be worked carefully to avoid developing hidden cracks that will cause failure in the future. Although rarely hard handwork titanium is not the hot short, even such common smithy processes decoratively twisting a bar are example with it. Some modern blacksmiths may also employ an oxy oxyacetylene or somehow similar to blow torch for more, for more localized heating. Induction heating methods are gaining popularity among modern blacksmiths. Color is important in indicating the temperature and workability of the metal. As iron is heated to increasing temperatures, it first glows red, then orange, yellow, and finally white. The ideal heat for most forging is the bright yellow orange color, approximately known as the forging heat. Because they must be able to see the glowing color of the metal, some blacksmiths work in dim, low light conditions. Most work in well, well lit conditions. The key is to have consistent lightning, which is not too bright, direct sunlight obscures the color. The techniques in blacksmithing may be divided into forging, sometimes called as a sculpting, welding, heat heat treating and finishing. Punching may be done to create a recursive pattern or to make a hole. For example, in preparation for making a hammer head, a smith would punch a hole in a heavy bar, bar or rod for the hammer handle. Punching is not limited to depressions and holes. It also includes cutting, slitting, and shooting, all done with a chisel. process of making a metal thicker in one dimension through shortening in the other. One form is to the head and to the head at the end of a root and then hammer on it as one would drive a nail. The root gets shorter and the, sh the hot part widens. An alternative to hammering on the hot end is to place the hot end on the anvil and hammer on the cold end. When iron ore is melted into usable metal, 
A certain amount of carbon is usually alloyed with the iron. Charcoal is small, almost pure carbon. The amount of carbon significantly affects the properties of the metal. If the carbon content is over 2%, the metal is called cast iron because it has a relatively low melting point and is easily cast. It is quite brittle, however, and can, cannot be forged, so therefore not used for blacksmithing. If the carbon content is between 0.25% and 2%, the resulting metal is tool grade steel, which can be heat treated. When the carbon content is below 0.25%, the metal is either wrought iron. Wrought iron is not smelted and cannot come from his process or mild steel. The terms are never interchangeable. In pre-industrial times, the material of choice for blacksmiths was wrought iron. This iron had a very low carbon content and also included up to 5% of glassy iron, silicate slag in the form of numerous very fine strangers. This slag content made the iron very tough, gave it considerable resistance to rusting and allowed it to be more easily forged welded. A process in which the blacksmith permanently joins two pieces of iron or a piece of iron and piece of steel by heating them nearly to a white heat and hammering them together. Forge welding is more difficult to do with modern mild steel because it has a narrower band of temperature at which it will weld. The fibrous nature of wrought iron required knowledge and skill to properly form any tool which would be subject to stress. Modern steel is produced using either the blast furnace or arc furnaces. Wrought iron was produced by a labor intensive process called padding. So this material is now a difficult to find specialty product. Modern blacksmiths generally shoot mild steel for making objects traditionally or of wrought iron. Electrolytic process pure iron is sometimes used. Many blacksmiths also incorporate materials such as bronze, copper, for the sword to be tightened with the wood handle. <laughs> 